sometimes I think people get the wrong message. Or maybe they're the wrong kind of messenger. You know, it's supposed to be, I think, now correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm sure you will, but don't we call it the good news for a reason? Isn't gospel mean good news? Don't we have something to share more than, oh, it's the end of the world, or, oh, repent from sin, or, oh, you blew this, you blew that, you need to be forgiven. I mean, isn't there kind of like joy somewhere along the way? <laughs> isn't our lifestyle, meaning being a Christian, walking with God, talking with Jesus, supposed to reveal that God has something better for us? I mean, lately, you know, I hear so much bad news that I wonder if they forgot the good news. Seems like it to me. You know, I take, with the ministry now, we take one day a week on Sunday, <laughs> and we talk about the good news. Like, hey, check out what's happening in the world that's positive. Now, I'm not a person that's real big on the power of positive thinking, like Dianetics or some kind of, you know, false religious idea. But there's a lot to be said about <laughs> if you're looking at only the bad, I think you're filling up this inside with only bad. And then everything <clears throat> you talk about <clears throat> is always going to reflect an attitude that's bad. Because one of the things that <clears throat> Jesus said was that you reap what you sow. I mean, don't get me wrong, if you really want to have a whole field full of one crop, meaning like despair, anger, malice, wrath, you know, kind of violence and, you know, all the evil that's going on in the world, well, you know, then you could plant that seed because the only problem you have might be, you know, you're going to have to quit looking at anything positive and just maybe go on the internet and only find those uh, tabloid sites that tell you about how bad things are. Ooh, the government's doing this to you. Ooh, they're sneaking around doing this weather control. Ooh, they're going after, you know, transgender mutational hyper hybrid alimentation of your DNA. <laughs> You know, sometimes I think some of them need to walk around with foil on their heads just to remind us who they are, because some of the stories they're putting out are just stupid. <laughs> I mean, we have a Bible. We have the Word of God. How do we get into sci-fi? I don't understand it completely, but, oh well, if you really want to plant your field or your soul with stories that are... <laughs> quite frankly, more science fiction than they are reality, then you can go out there and find all kinds of websites that will tell you about, ooh, the froggies are taking over the world. Ooh, we found that they've created a new dinosaur now and it's already full grown. I mean, some of it just sounds so dumb, I, I really wonder how people defend it. The latest was that I was surprised that a, a journalist even was posting stories about Facebook shutting down. And that was over the weekend, and then by Monday, regular news services had to come out with a story to discredit the person who was spreading rumors all over the internet about Facebook shutting down. <laughs> it's so silly. Sometimes, you know, you think common sense, there's no sense. And that's what seems to be happening in the world right now. People are overreacting to what they think they know when they don't know what they're talking about. You don't judge a field simply by looking at the dirt. Now, you could, don't get me wrong, you could go out in that field and say, you know, I see that dirt out there. It's pretty dirty, but I guarantee that, you know what, oranges are going to grow there. Well, if you don't know what an orange tree looks like, and you don't know how an orange tree grows, and you see these little, like, you know, shoots coming up, you know, and they don't go higher than, you know, six inches, I don't think it's an orange tree. <laughs> I could be wrong, but 
seems like the Bible said everything grows after its kind, you know. And so if you if you plant, you know, like alfalfa sprouts, <laughs> I think alfalfa sprouts are going to grow in that field. I may be wrong. <laughs> Maybe somebody snuck in and planted a few orange trees, but uh, I don't think so. So, really, in your day, when you look at things. Maybe you should observe a little closer what it's doing to you. Maybe recognize that your eye and your mind are connected. Your emotions are caught in between. Because somewhere between your eye, your mind, and your emotions, you're reacting to things you see and jumping to conclusions that might not be. But you know, humorously, when it's good news, it's hard to overreact to good news, isn't it? I mean, it happens, don't get me wrong. I mean, there's some people that like to, you know, kind of, they get so happy and blessed and enjoying the Lord, they kind of roll around on the floor and kind of bark like dogs and throw gold dust in the air and say it's God. Well, okay. Uh, could you go play with that in the corner? You know, I, I'm done with that. You know, I, I got out of Rupa Room and now I'm, I'm kind of like in the temple of the Holy Spirit. You know, I kind of like... I kind of know what's going on, so I don't need to do those kind of things, you know. They may be good for you, but don't do more on me, please. You know, go back in the romper room, you know, and play. It's a little safer back there, you know, you won't hurt yourself. But for me, you know, I kind of enjoy God. You know, I, I like talking to Him. I like seeing what He has in store for me each day. I like walking with Him. You know, and I like having a personal relationship with Him, because... It seems to me that he wants me to do something with my life. He wants me to accomplish some purpose that he's designed for me to do. It seems as though God is at work in my heart. Now, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm right. If it comes out of my mouth that I'm just kind of like not talking about God, maybe God ain't in there. <laughs> but if all I talk about is Jesus, Either I'm the greatest salesman in the world, you know, and I'm conning everybody, or Jesus is in me, both alive and well, and to do and to accomplish his purposes for me, and that I would rather turn my life over to him and let him direct the focus of my attention so that I'm looking at those things that are profitable, those things that are holy, those things that are a good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, then I would think on those things rather than fill my brain with all these weeds. I mean... With bad news, I mean with all this other stuff from the world. And really, I'd rather just enjoy life than to be slammed by it, especially by other Christians. Something's just not right when they're doing it that way. Start something good. For this shall the seed produce peace and prosperity. The vine shall yield her fruit, and the ground shall give its increase, and the heavens shall give their due. And I will cause the remnant of this people to inherit and possess all these things. Zechariah 8.12 Start something good in someone's life today. Sow faith for a healing. Sow hope for a restoration. Be thou a good example of good news. A sincere compliment can sow confidence in someone who is starving for encouragement. The forgiveness of an ongoing offense can sow a seed for a miracle breakthrough in that situation. You could, by hiding a sin and giving forgiveness, restore a brother unto you, and you have saved that soul from hell. Pray for someone else's need, or make a special offering to start something positive in the name of the Lord. Remember, God won't ask you to sow anything that he doesn't give you the grace to give. Enjoy the abundant harvest that is returned to your own life when you sow into someone else's life. It's easy and, for some, fun to tear things down. They like to get in there with a hammer and, you know, a crowbar and just rip out construction or tear up the ground, you know. And Frankly, if you look at their lives, you know, you kind of you kind of ask yourself, well, if they're always talking about tearing down, what are they building up? You see, for me, I'm an editor. I have to look at a lot of information that comes at me, you know, and I'm like, bam, 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 you know. Oh, 
did it come from? Welcome. So I look at the sites and the people, and I look at their posts and what they speak with their own mouth and what they write with their own hand, and I see, do they talk about Jesus? Because you see, I'm a Christian, so I like people that talk about Jesus. I like people that talk about Christ or godly things or things that seem to be, you know, scriptural and act according to scripture. So I look for those things and they encourage me. And when I'm encouraged, I share those things with other people. <clears throat> now, part of my day is a news service, so I do have to pass out some of the worldly news. But what I find the consistency of is that most Christians dwell on what's wrong and forget what is right. And that if you go out of your way to try to encourage them, they're blessed and they'll want to hear what you have to say. If you share Jesus in a personal way about who he is and what he's done in your life, even as we did this last weekend, people will go way out of their way to take what you have to say and share it with everyone else. I think that's kind of neat, you know, that might be why we share good news as opposed to bad news. I mean, it's your choice. You can you can plant your fields or plant your body or your soul with lots of bad news, but personally, I'd rather have a lot of Facebook friends, Twitter friends, or just Christian friends that, you know, like to be around me because I share the good news. I share the reality of Jesus in you and in me, both to do and to will of his good pleasure, which is to save the world, not to condemn the world, which is to share with the reality of having a personal relationship with God that you don't have to be caught up in the world in its ways because we all know it doesn't take a genius to figure that out. You could turn on the TV or you could read a newspaper or you could look on the internet and you can find all kinds of bad news. <laughs> don't have to look very far for that. Matter of fact, you don't even have to Google bad news. You can just turn on the computer and probably get bad news. Might not start. <laughs> but you know, wouldn't it be nice to get up in the day and go, Yeah, man, it's a good day. <laughs> Instead of, Oh, no, it's Monday. Or, Oh, thank God it's Friday. You know what I mean? Come on. Let's get real. Every day is a good day, depending upon what you sow into it. What you decide to bring into your life is what you're going to get out of life. So if you sow into your life good news, I mean, come on. Jesus, isn't that good? I mean, he's in you. He's with you. He's forgiven you. He said he will present you faultless before the Father with exceeding joy. That he would bless you. That he would provide for you all manner of ways with which you would escape from things that are too big for you to handle. Because you know, he will give you things that are too big for you to handle. Of course he will. Because the scripture says, there is no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you be able to bear it. Most Christians like to quote, God ain't going to give me anything too big for you to handle. And the scripture says, yes, he will, but he'll give you a way to escape it <laughs> so that you can bear it. So don't get that one mistaken because there's lots of people out there that are telling you all kinds of screwball things. The thing I would do is stick with the people that are telling you about Jesus. Because you know what? If someone's telling me about Jesus, then I think things are going to be all right. <laughs>